Why? Hello and welcome everybody. Also, good morning. Today, I wanted to go ahead and give you guys progression video number two with the Righteous Fire Inquisitor. Uh, so I got a little addicted the other day while playing. So we are currently level 92. I'm going to go ahead and flash you guys my skill tree. Uh, for the most part, it should be very similar to the guide. I think the only thing that maybe that may have changed is I have like a two point jewel here and a two point jewel here with a two point jewel here. Uh, now, a lot of people are asking why I'm not using Skitterbot, even though I'm past the level 90 bracket. Remember that in my POB, the levels, right? The levels that I put in the POB are not necessarily the levels you have to switch your gear at. It's more so like just a progression guideline. So I may not, for example, be able to do the Skitterbot swap for like a level or two, maybe even three, but that's okay. It doesn't mean you have to do it. Uh, anyway, let me go ahead and jump into a tier 11 map to show you guys our progress. Now this atlas at the moment is scuffed. My atlas is focused on like harvest, which is in a very bad spot right now. Uh, so yeah. Remember that when you're mapping, if you do not have Legacy of Fury like myself, you really want to make sure that you are using Infernal Cry, as Infernal Cry will be the biggest source of your clear. So for example, kaboom, and then the you know the back end of the box exploded. So after this, I'm going to go ahead and show you guys all of my gear. And then after my gear, I'm going to tell you a, bit, a little bit about where I want to go from here. And then we're pretty much done. Then I'm going to go pop up the live stream. That is a lot of Pua amulets. Okay. Remember, if you guys want to get my filter, you can find it under the filter command. Although it's a little scuffed because I'm trying the new alloy color scheme from Neversync. And I don't really like it very much. But other than that, it's pretty much fine. I think this is where the bosses are, right? Yeah, here they are. And all oh. of immense power. I think there's just one more section. Or is it here? Uh maybe down there? I mean, there's like this other part, but it doesn't really matter. Let me just go clear here and then we're done. All right, good enough. Okay, so let's talk about the character. So this is a weapon that I have that I crafted myself. Uh, the method for this would be making a new character, picking up an item level four scepter. I believe you can get it from the vendor. Maybe you can buy one on trade. Uh, alternatively, you could kill monsters for one to drop. This is a Void Scepter, it's a bit more complicated to have an item level 4 Void Scepter, but that will be explained later. It's also not really efficient because a lot of people are buying up the market for uh, the way you acquire this, which would be through uh, acquiring death cards for Munchicle's Grasp, turning in the Munchicle's Grasp on a level 4 character, corrupting the Munchicle's Grasp, hoping it goes a rare Void Scepter, which is a brick, then vendoring it with 4 Void Scepters on the item level 4 character. Anyway though. Uh, so this is currently using Hextouch Frostblink Armageddon brand. Uh, sorry, ooh, ooh, I'm tired. Hextouch, sorry, Frostblink and Flammability. Remember, if you can't acquire a scepter like this, there is nothing wrong with just constantly picking up scepters and identifying them. It may seem frustrating, but like upgrades are there. They do exist. So we dumped about, I think, 11, 12 Essence of Horror into a helmet. Uh, we ended up getting a Conk Effect helm, so I'm very happy. It also has that increased life regen. Remember, to do this, you want item level 82 plus, and this is your biggest source of single target. Uh, over here, I've got Trap and Mine, Fire Trap with Swift Affliction and Life Tap. 
I bought this amulet for about 15 chaos on trade. The main purpose is it does have a dot multi roll, but it has absurd amounts of dexterity at this stage in the game, allowing me to quite literally drop the dex node needed here and the dex node needed here while still having enough dex for everything. All right, moving on to the shield, um, using On's Heritage. I do think that um, Dawnbreaker is potentially better, but I don't want to spend 30 chaos on it when On's is literally 1C. Rise of the Phoenix is also a good pickup at this stage. Over here, I'm leveling another life tap, so it's useless at the moment, and I'm leveling another Determ, which does not do anything. I just wanted to level them. I picked a life tap because my Fire Trap and my Righteous Fire both um, use life tap, so getting a 21 life tap just secures it. Realistically, it would be better for me to off clar this and level an RF or a Fire Trap, but it doesn't matter that much. Uh, then I've got my Malevolence here. This is my actual Malevolence. Uh, going over Ring 1, basically just very heavy Chaos Res. Uh, I think I actually pulled this out of a Ritual. Uh, you can see we're currently rocking 67% Chaos Res. I've got another ring here. It's just, you know, basically the same as the other. It's mainly for my Chaos Resist. Going over my chest piece, I sniped a item level <clears throat> 80 Saintly Mail for one Divine Orb. It feels so wrong saying that. Uh, and I crafted with the following essence from my guide. Uh, we were using... Shrieking Essence of Loathing because it gives the Mono Reservation Efficiency. When you get that Mono Reservation Efficiency roll, you're able to drop the two point Conqueror's Efficiency here, so you gain two points back. So just from the amulet and the body armor, I saved four points. Uh, furthermore, so I was looking for basically just good stats. So for example, Mono Reservation Efficiency guaranteed, Life Regen is okay, it's never bad. Hold Resist is another resistance. Um, at that point, I just had Reflect, which was really shit. So I actually crafted Mana, then I used an Exalt Orb because, you know, they don't really cost much. I actually ended up hitting um, the 62% increased armor and energy shield, which is not bad at all. And then I crafted life, so I quite actually like this exalt change at the moment. And then in my RF, we're currently running Swift Affliction, Burn Damage, Life Tap, Ink AoE, Elemental Focus, and Righteous Fire. Uh, over in my gloves that I straight up identified. Also, one thing, my Eldritch Implicits are not really correct on these, nor are the Searing Exarch. We're just using them as we go to try to get more, right? Same thing with the gloves. We want exposure here and fire multi. We don't have either of those. Uh, so here I have faster attacks, shield charge, life tap, and infernal cry. Infernal cry is in here because it also wants to life tap so that I can like cross blink and infernal cry. Sometimes if you don't have enough maximum MP, you cannot do that. By putting it in a life tap, you can. Uh, my boots. Uh, boots are basically placeholder to Legacy of Fury. I've got Blood Rage, Molten Shell. Oh, I actually need to flip this. Blood Rage, Molten Shell, Purity of Elements, and Determ. Um, you know, very heavy Chaos Res, movement speed, that's really about it. And my belt. Normally, I would not use a belt like this, but it has a lot of Chaos Resist, so I opted out to just use this. I literally found this and just identified it, then vaulted it, didn't get anything good. Um, so yeah, th this would ideally be replaced with a Stygian Vice once I get some better stuff. Um, so I'm also currently stocking up on my Harvest stuff, thingamabobber, which is really lackluster, but... This is so that when I get my Stitch and Vice, I will be crafting Reforged Life. Now, for people asking, my weapon was crafted via Reforged Fire. It took maybe about 20 of them. Uh, I'll be doing Reforged Life right here for my belt. So, moving forward. Uh, potentially reroll my chest in the near future. I would like to get a plus one gems amulet. I would like to switch this to Dawnbreaker. Legacy of Fury would be massive right here. So, this is probably primary focus. Awakened gems can kind of start kicking in. My favorite Awaken gem to start is usually Awaken Ink AoE, but this entirely depends on the market price. Um, and then getting exposure on my gloves would be very, very, very big. So I guess that's, at the moment, the, the first stuff. Second thing is, I do have a Cluster Jewel. Um, I do have a Cluster Jewel. I'm not going to pop it up right now. But I could technically drop this part of my tree and start working towards a Cluster Jewel. But I do believe I want more jewels slash medium Cluster Jewels as well to make that transition. Um, and then one of the last thing, not last things, but another thing is I would also like to get an Aegis Aurora because if I get an Aegis Aurora, I can actually skip the part where we go, um, I can skip the part where we drop purity and get shock immune via our rings and I can just justify running Tempest Shield. Um, cause I don't really want to do the reduced effect of shock rings. So I'm probably going to attempt to skip it. Um, of course, you can do the same as me. You can follow the guide. There is no right or wrong way. It's just kind of skipping progression if you're like gearing fast. 
Anyway, that's pretty much about it for now, I believe. So hope you guys had a wonderful time. Hope you guys enjoyed yourselves. Sorry if I spoke too fast. Um, there's just a lot going on. I'm trying to pump out the content so I can go live. So take care. Have a wonderful time. Hope you guys enjoyed yourselves. Hope you guys enjoyed the build. If you did, please feel free to like, share, and subscribe. And don't forget, you can catch me streaming live every day at twitch.tv slash pox, except for Mondays. Except for today, though. See you guys all. Actually, today's Sunday. So yeah, never mind. See you guys all later.